Welcome to paradise. <laughs> This is the whole picnic. This is the whole picnic? Mm -hmm. uh, well, can no. I have my money back? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're standing here enjoying the uh, the rare Prague sunshine. Mm -hmm. Direct sunlight. It feels so good after a long winter. <laughs> What's it called? Letohrade Královny Anny. Královny Anny. Anny. Unpronounce, unpronounceable park name, <laughs> basically. So uh, we're going to walk across the uh, the road here, and we're going to see what we can find because I believe this is this is Letna across the way, right? Oh, I don't know. Worst Czech tour guide ever. <laughs> we have some nice spring blossoms, either apple or cherry, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, supposedly it's good luck. To kiss underneath the. But only blossoms. on the first of May. Only on the first of May. Oh, yeah. oh. Mm. Well, you know, I could use all the luck that I can get. So let's try. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the. Uh, I think like the western end of Letna Park, and we're gonna check out this building over here. I'm not quite sure what it is. Prague is known for its abundance of green spaces, open parks like this. Um, it's actually, it's one of the greenest cities in Europe as far as I know. Wow. Certainly out of all the ones that I've been to. This looks pretty interesting. What is this? We have a little cafe. Down here in the base of this building. And wow, look at this view. Let's uh, let's go check it out. Wow. So out here we have this unbelievable view of the Vltava River. <coughs> and uh, yeah, you can actually, you can see almost all of the landmarks in Prague from, from here over the second bridge that you can see there. That's the famous Charles Bridge. And then over to this side, we have the twin medieval towers of a church in Old Town Square. Uh, the tallest tower over there, that's the Zhishkov uh, television tower. Famous communist era uh, structure. I believe that's the tallest building in Prague too. That's the tallest yeah, tower in Prague. Walk down here through the mulch. We're going to come to a little cafe, probably selling some coffee. Looks like, uh, oh, they've got some food as well. Hoviezi, that's beef, beef burger, coffee and tea, kava and chai, cider, some beers, hot dogs. Wow, looks pretty nice. Kachko. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Wow, so nice. Beautiful, mm, isn't it? <clears throat> Rarely do you see Prague mm. illuminated with such uh, brilliant sunshine. <laughs> well, not rarely. It's not rare in the summertime. But wow. certainly for the last six or seven months you since October. The oh my god, no. Don't even show me that. Don't even show me that. <laughs> Forecast for the next few days is great, not great, looking, great, not looking great, good. Great, great. Typical Prague weather is uh, cloudy, cold, rainy, freezing, <laughs> freezing rain, uh, snow, wind. Yeah. Oh, but we have we have some news. What's the news? Uh, at midnight, no more like the districts and curfew. Okay, so the curf as of midnight tonight, the curfew is being lifted. Okay, so we've, here in the Czech Republic, we've been in a state of emergency for the past 189 days. So that's uh, that's got to be more than half a year, right? Or that's nearly. Yeah, definitely. That is, yeah, that's more than that's more than half of a year mm -hmm. we've been in a state of emergency. Jesus Christ. Uh, and as of midnight tonight, that is coming to an end. Let's celebrate. So we're very happy about that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to celebrate by getting myself uh, a coffee right now. 
And Czech oh, people just love them. these giant dogs. Yeah. Generally, if you see someone with a dog in the Czech Republic, it's either a giant dog or a very tiny one, like this, like this one over here. So I bought myself a coffee here for uh, 49 Czech crowns, which is roughly two dollars. It's like a double espresso for about two dollars, two fifty, something like that. It's not too bad. First though, yeah, yeah, yeah. So while Cat uses the bathroom, I'm gonna stand here drink my coffee and just give you some background shots of the Letna Park. No toilet paper? Mm -mm. You okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we gotta wait for this uh, for this couple to finish there. No, it's gonna take five hours. Oh uh, yeah, it looks like they're doing a pretty serious photo oh. shoot over here. This is like. Instagram gold. So, I don't know. Yeah. Let's use the other tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Which one? Like uh, this, this one right one. here? Okay. Yeah. yeah. They, they call this the Instagram boyfriend. Yes, you do. Yeah, that's what we have going on over here. And there's so many bees buzzing in, yeah. in and out of these leaves. These are good. I don't know if you can see that on the camera here, but all these bees buzzing in and out of the. Uh, Blossoms, pollinating. That's a good sign, actually. Mm. Means the world is not quite, it's not quite dead yet. <laughs> the environment has not been completely destroyed. <laughs> we might, we might make it another uh, ten years. Maybe. If we're lucky. So uh, we're coming up here to the main lookout spot in Letna. After 189 days of state of emergency, uh, the Czech people have had enough. Yeah. Wouldn't you say so? Yeah. And. Oh, yeah, there are like erotic posters, like stick inside. Yeah, this is like peak, peak COVID right here. Erotic posters urging people to stay inside their homes. <laughs> and all of these people. Are I'm not listening. Yeah. So yeah, here we have the Prague metronome. There's some metaphor to it, but I'm not sure what it is. To the metronome? Yeah. Yeah. I honestly don't know either. So I've heard rumors that these police are patrolling almost everywhere where crowds tend to gather in Prague, but they don't do anything. They just walk around making their presence, making their presence known, and nobody gives a crap. Yeah, I would say we have maybe a slightly unusual COVID situation in the Czech Republic, simply because uh, it's a small country with a population. <laughs> Somebody's being in the bushes over there. It's a small country with a population of about 10 million people and we have already had nearly 2 million vaccinations in addition to how many cases? cases? No, cases. no, 2 million vaccinations. Really? On top of that, many people have already uh, gotten and recovered yeah. from the virus, including you. I think you. like the highest number or like one of the highest... Yeah, one of the highest numbers, uh, certainly one Definitely of the highest percentages one of the highest percentages of the population for any country Plus, that's just the test in Europe, people, at least. So yeah. It's not even like the ball thing. So, uh, there's a good possibility that uh, <laughs> a majority of the people in the Czech Republic have already been mm. exposed to COVID. Mm. Um, and I think that's one reason why people are a little bit uh, casual about the restrictions mm. at this point. We were in uh, this big department store called uh, iGlobus, which is sort of like the Czech equivalent of like Sam's Club or Walmart. And because that's a store that sells uh, food, um, electronics, they sell, you know, things like pencils and notebooks, they sell everything. And because some things are allowed, to, like some shops are allowed to be open by law, and some shops are not allowed to be open, they literally just had the sections with the with the goods that were not allowed to be sold, marked off with like uh, yellow caution tape. 
and you weren't allowed to buy those things. Somebody buying a pencil or a notebook, that's gonna spread COVID, whereas somebody buying their groceries in the exact same space, the exact same location, mm. uh, yeah. that's not a problem. Yeah. yeah, I think that's another reason why people are just like sick of it. The other issue with the way the Czech Republic has handled this pandemic is uh, we've had, what, four or five health ministers <laughs> by now? So the health minister <laughs> gets fired or resigns in disgrace every, uh, yeah, like, like, two months. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I think Primula was like, they fired him because like he went to like a football game or something. <laughs> yeah, and like exactly. a few hours before, like he was like so serious, like, uh -huh. wear masks, like don't gather anywhere. And then like people see yeah. him, yeah, you know. Like, yeah, he was just, I mean, great openly yeah. hypocritical. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, I thought I thought he was the one that went to a restaurant without a mask. That was the first, uh, <laughs> I, like yeah, first I case <laughs> of him. Yeah. But then he also went to a football game. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Which is like I can't worse. keep track of all the different health ministers yeah. we've had. Yeah. No, it was Primula both times, but oh, I see. You know. Yeah. Mm. Oh wow, some some people wearing masks. That's uh, that's surprising. So this is a uh, huge outdoor beer garden. At the very end of last May, yeah. we the the strongest quarantine restrictions were still in place, and at one point, Kat and I walked past this this exact beer garden, and it was packed with people, like like five or six people at each table, and uh, you know people smoking, drinking beer, uh, everybody talking to each other. Um, and nobody was wearing masks because it was outside. So we were like, yeah, we were, at that point we were still yeah. like totally following the rules, mm -hmm. completely invested in the whole situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just kind of shocked to find that lots of people were just living their lives. There have been multiple uh, like police raids of underground parties because these, these bars and restaurants in the center of Prague, they're paying astronomical rent and uh, they're not allowed to do any business, so they're trying to stay open by any means necessary. And so a lot of them have been running illegal underground uh, parties. And so every few weeks, you see in the in the Czech news, you see that there's been another party that was busted by the cops. Yeah, because like the government is doing like a horrible job, like taking care of the people who like can't work. Some of the some of the big nightclubs in Prague, like Roxy, for example, or some of the other really famous Prague nightclubs resorted to essentially begging for money on Facebook because they the government was giving them no assistance. Mm -hmm. They they were not able to, to do any business legally at all. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I, re I remember back in, uh, like, October or November, I saw a post on Facebook from one of the big Prague nightclubs. I think it was Roxy, I don't remember, though. And they were saying basically they were going to go out of business within three or four weeks if they if they didn't get a huge uh, influx of donations or some other kind of help. And there was literally like, <laughs> like you had to be personally invited to these parties and you would like, you would meet someone on a, someone on a street corner and they would, tech, they would uh, tell you the address and some kind of password to get into the, I mean, it was, it, it was like, it was like prohibition era in the, in the United States. And another reason why I think people aren't taking the restrictions as seriously as maybe they should is because the government has just lost all credibility. I mean, the messaging from the government changes completely from one day to the next, certainly mm -hmm. from one week to the next. And- uh, It's like they don't have a plan. And they, yeah. I think they even admit it. And, uh, and it's very obvious to everyone that's paying attention that the government has no idea what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this is probably one reason why the situation has gotten so bad mm -hmm. here. And, and why it's lasted so long, because and people are, are not paying attention to any of the restrictions. I was listening to a podcast and they said like, because we were like winners for some time, uh, because like, you know, like no deaths, mm -hmm. like in March. Yeah. Uh, so people felt like, oh, okay, that's not like a threat. That's right, threat. yeah. I mean, I, along with everyone else in the, in the summer of 2020, I assumed that the COVID situation in the Czech Republic was basically over. And the truth was that it just hadn't even begun yet. Just by contrast to what we saw in the park, you can see here that everybody waiting on the tram platform is wearing a mask. And uh, generally when you walk around in the city, you see a lot more people wearing 
masks just walking down the, uh, the sidewalk. So it's not, I mean, people aren't ignoring everything completely, but definitely in the parks nobody really bothers to, to wear the mask. So these, these little uh, stores here, basically the Czech equivalent of like a 7-Eleven, and uh, they call it a potravini which just means like foods, right? Or groceries mm -hmm, yeah. in Czech. Uh, looks like the church is open too. Let's, let's go check it out. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm not sure it's actually open to the public, but we're gonna, we're gonna check it out. So unfortunately, there's no photography of any kind allowed in the church. Uh, so maybe I can just catch a quick glimpse and then put the camera away. One second, here we go. That's it, now we're gonna put the camera So it's almost 8 p.m. here and I'm headed back home to uh, teach an online SAT class. I'm headed into the Vltavska metro station. We gotta put on the mask as we go down here and I'm gonna take you down into the into the metro and get some footage of what it like what it looks like right now on the Prague uh, public transit as we go home. So we're on the red line right now. Got to make sure we're going the right direction. So we got to take uh, the red line this way to Florence and then transfer to the yellow line, the B line. Okay, so we're going over here. What you see here is a pretty typical Prague metro station. Nothing fancy. We're gonna get on and find a good spot. busy, uh, but not really doing much of anything as far as, as far as I can tell. So right now we're transferring to the B line, burrowing down deeper into the, uh, the bowels of the earth. Somebody's yelling. This is uh, pretty much every time you're down inside the metro, you're going to hear some drunk person uh, yelling about something. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna steer clear of uh, of that situation. So here we are at the Burka Metro stop. And this is my neighborhood. And now we're about uh, a five minute walk from home. We're just catching the last little bit of light in the night sky here. So, I'm gonna sign off for now. Uh, happy spring from the Czech Republic.